This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television. Your support makes UCTV's programming possible. Contribute online at uctv.tv slash support. Check out the YouTube original channel UCTV Prime at youtube.com slash UCTV Prime. Subscribe today to get new programs every week. First of all, let me welcome all of you to our university, especially those of you for whom this is your first visit. We hope it will not be your last. Your Holiness, we are of course honored to welcome you to the University of San Diego, a Catholic university whose mission commits us to educate men and women to become ethical leaders dedicated to compassionate service. Our School of Peace Studies was established because of a generous benefactor, Mrs. Joan Kroc. She hoped that we would not only teach peace, but make peace. Your Holiness, as a spiritual leader, one who has strives and continues to live a life dedicated to peace by working for justice. You are truly a living witness to the greatest aspirations of our university. And thus, we are very honored today to present to you the University of San Diego Medal of Peace. Shows 
there's something to do with this person. <laughs> if you remain here, then nobody knows. <laughs> Not very sure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was pretty special. <laughs> and now it is my privilege to introduce to you Pam Omidyar, who is the founder of Humanity United, a foundation that is committed to building peace and advancing human freedom. She is the co-founder with her husband, Pierre, of the Omidyar Network, which promotes economic, social, and political change. Please join me in welcoming Pam to the podium. Thank you, President Lyons. Hello, everyone. I am honored and delighted to be with you here today and to introduce His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama to the University of San Diego. We are so fortunate to have His Holiness speak on the topic of how to cultivate peace and justice. His life has been dedicated to expanding harmonious living through universal human values and a shared understanding of each other's religious traditions. Surely, these are the underpinnings of a peaceful and just global society. His Holiness began his monastic education at the age of six, after being recognized a few years earlier as a reincarnation of the 13th Dalai Lama. In the middle of his studies, at the age of 15, His Holiness also assumed the role of Tibet's temporal leader, much earlier than planned, after China's incursion into Tibet. Committed to peace through nonviolence, His Holiness continued working towards a peaceful resolution with China and continued his studies, earning a Geshe degree, the equivalent of a doctorate in Buddhist philosophy. However, uh, in 1959, His Holiness and many Tibetans were forced to leave the country and found safety in India. The Dalai Lama shares the status of refugee with over 15 million people around the world for whom lack of both peace and justice in their home country may mean years, sometimes their entire lifetime, spent away from home. His Holiness and so many Tibetans have been political refugees for over 50 years. During this time, His Holiness has advocated for the education and safety of his fellow Tibetans, has traveled around the world to share his message of secular ethics and religious harmony, and he has raised awareness of Tibet and its people's desire for genuine autonomy and freedom. In his spare time, he has written over 70 books and continues the full duties as a spiritual leader of Tibetan Buddhism. A testament to his work and universal acceptance of his teachings, His Holiness has received over 80 honors and awards from organizations and universities in nearly 30 countries. This includes the Nobel Peace Prize, the U.S. Congressional Medal of Honor, the Mother Teresa Memorial International Award, and this year, the Mahatma Gandhi International Award for Reconciliation and Peace, the Templeton Prize, and the University of San Diego Medal of Peace. His Holiness continued his political duties until last year when he officially retired. He continues to be the spiritual leader for millions of Buddhists around the world and an inspiration to religious and non-religious people everywhere. The Dalai Lama teaches us that peace and justice can coexist. Too often, we consider that peace requires foregoing justice or that seeking justice defers peace. This is a false choice. Justice and peace are inextricably linked. Too often, those working the peace negotiations are at odds with those seeking accountability for wrongs committed. Hidden intentions and narrow perspectives contribute to this problem. However, where there is a greater collective commitment to take on a broad and shared vision for the future, a good and just peace can result. In his recent book, Beyond Religion, Ethics for the Whole World, 
His Holiness writes about both peace and justice within the framework of compassion. Compassion and nonviolence are signs of courage, not weakness. It takes courage to engage one's enemy with understanding and dialogue rather than force. This has been the Dalai Lama's approach towards both peace and justice for the people of Tibet and elsewhere in the world. Unlike so many people forcibly oppressed throughout history, the Dalai Lama never embraced the idea of violent resistance. He understood from the very beginning that violence never, lead, never leads to lasting peace. Buddhist training has shown him how to use logic and a broad long-term perspective to understand that violence can only beget more violence. If only our world leaders use this higher standard of thinking and reflection in their political decisions. Your Holiness, thank you for your tireless efforts around the world to share your teachings. You've taught us that our personal peace can lead to world peace if we all make the effort. Please join me in welcoming His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. Perhaps I take a few moments. I would like to speak or stand, oh. sort of show my respect. Now, each place, mainly university, where I speak, I've got this kind of, of cap. <laughs> so very useful. <laughs> So, the morning, I got another sort of, sort of cap, yeah, University, University, of, University of California, San Diego. Uh, then I a little sort of doubt whether I should wear that or my own sort of cap, yeah. Uh, then I thought maybe if I kept, you see, that, that one received from another university, uh, you may find some little... Annoyed. Ka. Annoyed. <laughs> Uncomfortable. <laughs> Uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so then I saw this there, but till so someone give me this, I cannot touch. <laughs> <laughs> so I wear that my own sort of because of the old old one. Okay, now. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, I'm very, very happy and great honor uh, to see, receive you this medal, that? medal of peace. Medal. Thank you very much. I'm just another human being. We are same. But this kind of awards or some of the medals, uh, then I feel, oh, this is some kind of recognition my small contribution for serving humanity in order to bring happier. So, so thank you very much. Uh, firstly, you invited me here. And secondly, you see, you uh, give me this, so thank you. And then I really impressed now number of places and different countries. Now quite often I hear, I'm hearing what? compassion, peace, nonviolence. Uh, and not only that, just a word, but Many places, including this university, you see, there are pockets who are really making actual effort, implementation way, or effort, uh, more awareness about the value of compassion. Uh, so now, 
And the topic is my talk, Peace and Justice. We have to know what's the real meaning of peace. If we consider peace is simply mere absence of trouble or violence, then sometimes under injustice rule, some superficial peace also possible. And opposite for justice, some violence also sort of involved. Now when we uh, when we sort of get deeper understanding about peace, that means you see, firstly, genuine peace must come through inner peace, not out of fear, not out of some kind of how should say, Jim Dutch house, huh? um, appearance, just uh, uh, appearance, superficial hmm? appearance. Uh -huh. Peace must come through inner peace. So actually. Violence and non-violence demarcation, uh, not on action, but on motivation. There are three levels of action, physical action, verbal action, mental action, three levels. So ultimate demarcation, peace and violence is related with motivation, mental action. So for example, with sincere sense of concern of others' well-being, including sort of uh, say these children or students, their well-being, or mother or teacher, sometimes using a little bit sort of harsh word or sort of what's the harsh face. Method. No. Uh, but this actually non-violence because that kind of physical action or verbal action come out of genuine sense of concern of their well-being. So essentially that is non-violence. Other hand, motivation, want to cheat, want to exploit, want to take advantage, uh, and then use nice word, praising. Uh, and including some sort of gift. Physical action looks non-violence. Verbal action looks non-violence. But because of the motivation, want to harm that. So essentially, violence. So the ultimate demarcation, violence and non-violence, is entirely based on motivation. Yeah. So, out of compassion, uh, or sense of genuine concern of others' well-being, uh, then any action essentially non-violence. So, non-violence, uh, because of the non-violence, we can say non-violence is the Reflection. Expression. Ah. Expression. Expression of warm heartedness. So, so long you have genuine concern of others' well being, then justice automatically comes. Because there is no room, desire, or action harming other or injustice. Uh, and then just injustice, uh, I think again, the ultimately, the, again, you see, demarcation is anything which helpful other, uh, mainly long run helpful, any action, I think that's just action. Any action, long run, harmful, is, uh, I feel, Unjust, unjust. Unjust. So therefore, 
I think every human action, those sort of things, the effective human action, uh, through motivation. So, so now, key thing is warm-heartedness. The, actually, the sense of concern of others' well-being. Now here, I often use explaining the compassion or sense of concern of others' well-being. Uh, oh. You see, there are two levels. One level, mainly biological factor. Those social animals, uh, and also particular, I think social animal, and then also the mammals, you see, they, they are youngsters. For youngsters' survival, depend on others' care. Uh, then, biologically, it equipped some kind of motivation, some kind of emotion, the taking care, tremendous sense of concern of their well-being. That's not only human beings, but many birds and animals, obviously like dogs, cats. You see, they are youngsters, they are survival. Uh, you see, they uh, entirely depend on uh, care by Pets. mother or, you see, they are, Parents uh, love. I mean, they are relatives. So that's the basic nature. So according to that nature, we uh, equipped the sense of sort of closeness feeling, sense of sort of concern of others' well-being. Uh, so that's one level, biological level. That is common with other species of mammals, which sort of same sort of kind of kasota. We, uh, we, we are sort of survival. Last few days I spent in uh, Hawaii. And one time, my previous visit to Hawaii, uh, I expressed, I wish uh, some people there, you see, carry some sort of uh, research some is the turtle, the mother turtle, come shore where? On the shores. Oh, on the shores, uh, then dig uh, on, on sand, then egg lay down, then cover, then mother go. Then they what is say young 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 turtle Turtles. when they as a hatch hatch. The hatch. hatch. Mm. <coughs> They themselves uh, sort of carry, I mean, have to fight for their own survival. Some sea birds, uh, there are a lot of things, but they, I think, timing sometimes during night. Uh, so, mother turtle, not there. So, therefore, the nature create such thing. Their youngsters have to survive by their own effort. No need mother's care. So, emotionally not equipped taking care their youngsters. So therefore, I'm still curious. So though, those who see young turtle and kept and then some mark on the mother turtle at, at the time of laying uh, the eggs, lay, laying, the eggs. Laying, uh, laying the eggs, uh, laying, laying eggs, some sort of mark, then try to put together her youngster and mother. I don't think they have the sort of sort of ability, because uh, of the ability, ability, or I don't know, a sense. You see, her caring, the mother caring, the youngster the youngster, tremendous sort of 
closest feeling towards mother, I don't think. Because nature is such, their survival uh, not depend on others' care. Others, including ourselves, we human beings. Uh, so that is the biological factor. That always oriented others' attitude. If ca in case the mother, you see, uh, show negative attitude always to the children, to the youngster, then maybe change. Because you see, it, it depends on others' attitude. So that always biased, limited. Now, that kind of sort of compassion, that kind of sense of caring of other, uh, sense of concern of others' well-being, uh, take as a seed, then use human intelligence. Think, uh, what, what, what benefit if we uh, have compassion? The opposite of the compassion is anger, mainly hatred. What benefit? Hatred. If we analyze, uh, if we objectively observe uh, these different emotions, although all these emotions are part of our mind uh, and part of our nature, uh, like external matter, I say some are useful for our health, some are harmful for our health. Uh, but we never say, this is just a nature. We try to investigate, and then these two different things mixed or synthesized, then we might find some useful things. That we usually do. So why not? Since we really making investigation, what's the very sort of nature or sort of usefulness, or harmfulness of these matters. So similarly, you know, emotion, emotion world, not just one single sort of mind, the thousands of different sort of emotions, different minds. So worthwhile to investigate among these different emotions. What kind of emotion uh, effect, what kind of sort of the result? Uh, no. Uh, what kind of emotion what effect on us? And obviously, I think we all, everybody here, I think all have the experience of anger. When you fully develop anger, whether with reasons or no reasons, I think during that moment, if your friend brings some good, some nice food, I think you may not get a good taste. Full of anger here and you may not get sound sleep, isn't it? So usually, you see, our method is too much worry, too much stress, and about develop a frustration, anger. Then usually what we do is go outside, picnic, and see, or mu listen to music, and all this trouble, forget for the time being, uh, or relax, or tranquilizer, or alcohol, or drugs. These are temporary methods. Uh, this confirmed everybody experience. Some emotions are really disturb our mind. That is clear. No need proof, no need reason. Then, like, sort of compassionate feeling, warm feeling. Once that develop, your stress reduce, blood pressure reduce. Uh, even your meal, the other day <laughs> in Hawaii, I just expressed, I wish, I want to have native food. So then next day, my lunch, they arrange uh, also, you see, the native food. Uh, 
when I start test. <laughs> But I have deep respect, <laughs> deep respect. <laughs> so even, you see, not delicious, but still you feel oh, some kind of sort of closeness with that because of respect of the uh, local people, indigenous people, their way of life, their sort of city, food, their culture. So the poor family, their sort of meal may not be uh, wonderful, but with their friends, full of trust, full of sort of kasoda, respect, mutual respect, trust. Or the food, then secondary, not important. Other hand, big restaurant, a lot of expensive food, expensive wines, right? Yeah. But digging with some person, you have feel of, feeling of jealousy, feeling of suspicion, feeling of distrust. Uh, you may not Enjoy. really get the Enjoy. enjoyment which suppose you should bring these facility. This is our common experience, isn't it? So it is really worthwhile, not only taking care about external material things, but also, you see, extremely important to take care about our inner different emotions. That is very important. So materialistic society never bother about these things. Uh, yes. The, uh, many people, you see, follow religious faith. So the faith, tremendous sort of uh, also the, uh, faith towards God as a creator, according to the religion, as a creator, tremendous sort of faith towards God. That means you totally submit it to God. So that mental attitude reduces extreme self-centered arrogance. So many emotions which based on that kind of self-centered self-centered self-centeredness will reduce. So it works. So whether believer or non-believer, it's really worthwhile having some knowledge about map of the mind or emotions, then it is really helpful to know the uh, different sort of effects of these different emotions. Then, as external matters synthesize or further sort of experiment, similarly, carry further sort of experiment about these different emotions, then eventually you will find certain ways to reduce these destructive emotions and increase positive emotions. So that's the way to cultivate or to nurture uh, our sort of positive emotion which come from nature based on biological factor further nurturing that then it reach second second second, second, level. second level of compassion now that unbiased now here is one slogan compassion without borders compassion without border the biological factor of compassion is with water, only your own relatives. As soon as one of your relatives' attitude change, their compassion no longer there. Instead of compassion, you develop suspicion, hatred, anger. Uh, so now, through training, training uh, 
does not mean meditate or prayer, but simply use our common sense uh, and utilize the latest the scientific findings for those who are medical scientists and also the brain specialist. Now they begin to, because of that, begin to uh, say, explore. Because that, I mean, they, they start interest about mind or emotions because they are sort of research really reach very deep about brain. Then the brain activities and emotions very close link. Sometimes certain emotion. But previously, every emotion must sort of due to, must take place due to brain's activities. Nowadays, different views now beginning through sheer training of mind, uh, some change on our brain. And because it brings to the plasticity. So, <clears throat> so the, the discovery of plasticity seems to have opened a way in which we can understand how deliberate conscious thought processes can actually affect changes on the brain level. So, through mere sort of what's the single point of thinking or some other sort of training of mind actually effect on our brain. So whether you accept or you, whether you understand the continuation of that mind or not, that's a different matter. For the time being, different matter. Uh, but the feeling is there. The cognitive power is there. Uh, it's really a matter of, uh, I mean, important matter for our daily life. More peaceful, more calm mind. These emotions are very, very sort of related. So therefore, the scientists now begin to uh, investigate uh, about relation, emotions, and neurons, these things. Uh, so it is immense helpful. So they found calm mind, more calm mind, really uh, your physical so the elements create more balance. So that way, your physical condition improve. Recover really? from illness also much faster. Uh, faster. Uh, I think simply mental state, hopeful sort of, uh, and hopeful and fresh mind, uh, immense benefit, completely lost hope and demoralized, uh, very bad for our health. So in order to develop calm mind, fear is the destroyer of calm mind. Distrust, destroyer, opposite, uh, anger, hatred, all these are actually destroyer of peace of mind, peace of mind, calm mind. Uh, these destroyer, uh, through material sense, we never defend, we cannot defend. <laughs> because of these destroyer within ourselves, external destroyer come. Oh, and you can sorry. put defenses. Uh, you can put defenses. Mm. So, actually, we can say actual destroyer of your happiness is actually enemy. That kind of enemy is within yourself. So the proper way to combat that, we, you, we must find within our own mind, within, within ourselves. So it is really worthwhile more study about uh, the nature of mind or emotion and its sort of systems. Uh, now here, 
in order to reduce this destroyer of inner peace. The only way is increasing this opposite uh, mind. For example, the hatred, anger, or suspicion, distrust, you must develop compassion, sense of concern of their well-being. Uh, that also, that compassion, uh, sometimes the people feel, uh, I feel compassion. That's some kind of pitiness feeling. Not that. Genuine sort of sense of concern, very much based on respect. Others right, others be. So that, that kind of compassion is really very kind of the noble, noble sort of uh, emotion like that. Uh, so that so that emotion or that kind of mind increasing, then distrust reduce. Even distrust with fact, you take a little cautious, but still you respect that person. So like enemy, you know the person really harms you, hates you, and create trouble for you. And yet, you see, we can keep genuine sense of compassion, sense of concern of their well-being on the level of they also human being, most cases human being. They also human being, just like, just like myself. myself. No. And then, uh, moreover, these also, you see, my future depends on these people. So with that kind of sort of knowledge, still respect. So we can make distinction, actor and action. There are negative action towards you. That sometimes you need counter sort of measure. Oppose, stop, try to, because of that. Stop that. Stop that but the meantime, respect that person and still keep genuine sense of compassion, sense of uh, concern. concern of well-being. That you can do. Uh, I think to oneself, sometimes we made some mistake. Then sometimes we angry to ourselves, to oneself, to oneself. Right? To oneself. But that very anger, you see, develop because of you love yourself. Right? You cherish it. Because you care for yourself. Oh. So similarly, uh, out of sort of serious caring about the enemy as a human brother, sisters, uh, their wrongdoing, long run, very harmful for their own future, for their own Kazoda, interest. Uh, interest. interest. Therefore, out of that sort of motivation, then try to stop uh, different ways, different ways, if possible. If not possible, then okay. <laughs> then, then, then nothing can be done. <laughs> um, there's a Tibetan saying, and the Tibetan word for a temper uh, rhymes with uh, knuckles. So the saying uh, is, when you lose your temper, just bite your knuckles. But it is, it is impossible to stop that. Just let angry, no good. So then, bite. <laughs> <laughs> so at least, there's some pain that distracted your anger. <laughs> like that, I think, I think that way. <laughs> so in any way, uh, so in any way, uh, through education, education, through awareness, I think we can develop deeper understanding about the system of our inner world. Uh, through that way, we can develop genuine inner peace. Once that inner peace uh, develops, justice automatically comes. So my way, uh, and many others of my friend, many scientists, many uh, uh, soci sociologists, uh, and educationists, who 
really concerned about uh, sort of youth, younger generation, some sort of I should say, violence, some kind of unhealthy things you see happening. So as a result, now many occasions we're discussing what is the real causes of this unrest. And also many sort of richer family, uh, materially, everything there, but still feel some kind of asika. Uh, uh, as a person, a very unhappy person. So these now, these sort of uh, so a, a matter which which brings our questions. Yeah. Oh, plenty of money. Uh, they are life, very luxurious life, but still not happy. What's wrong? It confirmed us material values, material facility have the ability to provide physical comfort, not mental comfort. With money, some satisfaction in mental, uh, that's temporary. Long run, mental comfort must develop within mind itself, through training of mind, uh, with awareness of the mental system. So therefore, this is my way. No. So that is about my talk. Uh, so I'm extremely happy. You see, more and more people now really showing genuine interest, a genuine concern about peace of mind. So the global level or national level, family level or individual level, uh, everybody want, I mean, the, the, the old level, the ultimate source of happiness is within ourselves. So a person who have certain way of sort of, because of the way of, way of thinking and certain views, then no matter what the surrounding situation, you may be surrounded by hostile sort of atmosphere, but still you can keep peace of mind happy. Uh, other hand, the, all the best facilities surrounded and many friends, but person, something wrong here will not achieve happy life. So I think we are 21st century. 20th century really become century of real testing, human mind, human life. Immense material development take place. And a lot of sort of because of the technologies. Uh, but at the same time, the 20th century uh, eventually become century of bloodshed, century of fear, century of violence. Even beginning of this century, those sort of un, unhappy events, actually a symptom of the past negligence or past mistake. So since immense technology development, material development failed to bring real sort of happy humanity, now we have to find, we have, now time come, we have to find different ways uh, to explore. Investigation, simply investigation, not just as a faith, but investigation. So the education sort of today, uh, institutions are a key factor to further sort of experiment, to further sort of investigate. Uh, I'm very happy in this country, uh, like Wisconsin University, and Emory University, and Stanford University, and then also some university in Canada, I think, uh, and India also. Now there are the in education field. You see some people now really feel now existing education system is not adequate. We need to further some development. So I'm quite sure you already have some sort of the 
uh, pockets already here. So please, you carry further sort of, kind of the experiment. Hmm. Then I often see expressing the eventually we have to find some kind of curriculum in, in secular education field uh, uh, about these inner values from kindergarten up to university level. The first uh, kindergarten level, the, uh, some sort of what's curriculum, then uh, carry as an experiment one school, limited uh, student, Look, uh, five years, uh, what result, what effect? If positive result, then expand another 10 school, then another 100 school. Then things become really convincing. Positive, definitely some positive result come. Then we can because of the, uh, we can adopt larger scale like that, even finally federal level, right. Right. like that. Finally, like UN, global. UNESCO, no, global level, global level, global body. So I think we can do. That is the real sort of foundation, in order to, uh, I'll say, the, in order to build happy. 21st century as a happy century, peaceful century, peaceful, as I mentioned earlier, very much based on inner peace, compassion. Therefore, I think our ultimate goal is we should make every effort on all level. Eventually, uh, within this century, uh, we, should, uh, sorry, we, we should have a compassionate world, peaceful. Then peaceful world automatically come. We can do. That does not mean the seven billion human beings all become religious person. No. They're religious believer. They have their own different sort of way to promote this compassion, forgiveness, tolerance. Wonderful. Then those non-believer uh, or those people who are not much serious about sort of say, these inner values, then through education, through awareness, everybody uh, taking care of oneself. So the best way to care one's own physical well-being uh, and mental well-being. So healthy mind bring healthy body and healthy family, like that. So I think that's the way to build, to change uh, transformation, transform our world. What do you think, some sense? <laughs> Thank you. So please think more, think more these things. I often used to telling people after my talk, if you find some sort of sensible some thing. Sense, no? Some sense. Some sense, then think more. Uh, and those people, uh, if he if feel, you see, not much sense, then forget, no problem. <laughs> mm. uh, I'm leaving day after tomorrow, so no problem. <laughs> Your problem remains forever with you. <laughs> so you have to manage, you have to manage. <laughs> and then, yeah. Uh, Then one thing, America, materially, I think in the last century, I think really you made tremendous progress. Now, as I mentioned earlier, some of these universities in this country, uh, I often, you see, uh, expressing those concerned people, now new so innovations, I'm aware. Innovation. Innovations uh, from this country. But really, really, I think worthwhile, really worthwhile. Not only just, you see, material thing, but some other sort of more civilized, sort of advanced sort of thinking. 
advanced education system. I think you, America, the, I think greatest democratic country. As far as the population is concerned, the most populated democratic country is India. So India also, in spite of some sort of economy, economy also now improving, and in spite of many difficulties, there are a number of people who really, you see, thinking seriously about this line. Then after all, India, thousand years, I, uh, they, I think uh, uh, more than 3,000 years, the concept of nonviolence, concept of religious harmony, these are something I feel living example on this planet. So I really have sort of great hope, America and India. So please think more on this line. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 So, bye bye. Thank you.